unless one has an affinity for looking ridiculously foolish, it is wise not to stumble aimlessly into a fantasy football draft. The Ultimate Draft Kit from the Fantasy Footballers contains all the information you need to avoid the jeers of your enemies and to snuff out any glint of hope in their souls. Imagine the gasps those trouser-wearing turnips will emit as you make yet another triumphant draft selection. Imagine their tears forming a formidable puddle as you assemble an unstoppable force. The ultimate draft kit comes bursting at the seams with fantasy goodness. When you enter the draft room, you'll feel as if you were a monstrous beast let loose in a chicken coop. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday, June 4th. So no, that wasn't Adam Thielen that did the <laughs> intro. Nice try. That was uh, 98-year-old David Attenborough, who's doing just fine. That's um, I think he's still working, too. Oh, my I mean, clear, I mean, obviously. Clearly, yeah, clearly, because it was, it was definitely him. It was definitely For sure that was him. It sounded just old. like him. And I'm I'm a little sad that you named him. Yeah, as the as the Reaper yourself, Andy. I feel uh, like I feel like you got to be careful with your power here. I think if I I think anybody messing around with ninety plus year olds has got to be careful. <laughs> well, sure. I think that's the risk factor. I'm just saying the Queen of England was enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that didn't go well. Um, mock draft episode today. Happy to have you back with us. Hopefully, you enjoyed our bonus episode of the show that came out on. Saturday. Now I I enjoyed that. I enjoy doing a surprise episode for the Foot Clan. We love you. This show is all about you, your team, helping you get better, helping you win at your draft. That's what the UDK is all about. Yada yada yada. But but there was a one great exceptionally negative awesome, byproduct beautiful. of Saturday's episode. Oh, I, I had no idea where we were going. I knew, yeah, I knew okay. where he was going. Okay. And what happened on Saturday was, unfortunately, after many months, it's, it's, the jig was up. It's really, it had, it's fortunate because it has to happen. It, it has does to happen, have to for, happen for the joke to complete. So for those, uh, and many of you have no idea what we're talking about. Well, so far, no one has any idea. But. Jason Moore, for many, many months, has been sipping <laughs> his beverage of choice from a fantasy footballer's mug here at the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he didn't know is that for many, many weeks, there was a little sign on the bottom of the on the uh, on the bottom of the mug. Yeah. And if if we look over <laughs> in Deucer's Alley, yeah, our young smirky little falcon over there, newest member of the team. Matt had He's been sneaking a little I love Prius m message on the bottom of his mugs and then deviously only halfway filling your mug. I literally criticized him a couple weeks ago because he's, you know, he, he offered, he was like, Hey, I want to he fill your guys' set mugs. He gets ready for us. He wants, yeah, gets a set. I want to get, you know, what do you want to drink today? And, and I, you know, this seemed altruistic and, and like, oh, he was, he was just being so it was kind. Great. I, uh, he filled my water up. No, yeah, mine no, no, too. no, he didn't want to, he didn't want to get our drinks. He wanted to punk me <laughs> and make sure that my drink had the right mug that said, I love Prius, and then only fill it up halfway so that I had to tip it more <laughs> to drink. So you that the are camera, a monster. So the camera could see the sign. You are a monster for two different reasons, and I am very, very proud of you. Um, I know that we made a good hire, um, but <laughs> for everyone listening, there will be a new job opening up real soon. <laughs> right, right. So pack your things. How, how long did it did it happen, Matt? Like when did you when did it start? Do you have any idea? About a month ago. Yeah. Okay. The worst part is like he 
he did start asking all of us if we wanted to have our drinks filled up because, you know, just being kind about it, wanting to have our drinks filled up. And we didn't know. Me and Mike didn't know. Oh, I did not. And the deucers are in on this thing. And I'm like, I thought it was all altruistic. And I'm like, this is very nice. My drink is filled up. Like, Josh. But then I found out this, I'm just a byproduct of the gag. Which is fine. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I got cold water. Josh caught strays because. Most things are his fault. He, well, no. Oh, Because he vague tweeted about uh, he he tweeted some garbage bull crap of like when people finally finally find out or something yeah and You're not what, a fan of the like vague tweet one of my top pop uh, uh pet peeves pot peeves pop pies papa to papa deuce uh pet peeves is is v posting vague messages on, on social media i hate it hate you, it so you much do, you to do. the point where i'm like josh what is this garbage and then I mean, he's got the joke going. I don't know about it. And I'm like, okay, Josh, you're muted. And Josh, I, I had muted Papa Josh on Twitter for several weeks. I just recently unmuted him. So like he, he caught that yeah, one, but yeah. he, he stood firm for the joke for the deucers. And people have noticed they posted YouTube comments and Jason just hasn't caught them. And he finally, caught I them. finally got one of them. <laughs> and you're a beautiful person who ever posted that. So there you go. That was some fun from the weekend. Let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. Now, to be clear, you're not a Prius fan? <laughs> oh, man. No. So, uh, not at all. Because that's not what we thought. No, yeah, it, they're the worst drivers on the planet. Okay. Justin Jefferson has agreed to a four-year extension with the Vikings worth $140 million. I believe $110 million of it. <laughs> guaranteed. Yep. That gives him an average annual salary of $35 million. He went on. Uh, Instagram shared a really nice video. I did laugh a little because, yeah, and this is just business in football, but like the video is like, man, you know, I'm back for the next five years. I did you hear that? It was like, oh yeah, that's not a long time. Yeah, it is, I, but it isn't. You know, I chuckled a little bit at the video too because it's it's like this heartwarming PR thing, which like it was nice. There's, they there's don't a, all do it. There's an aspect of it like it's nice. You know, the fan, the Minnesota fans, which I, the, several Minnesota fans on my timeline, you're like, we did it. Like, thank goodness, because there was, I think there was some growing unrest of like, are we seriously going to trade Justin Jefferson? Is this going to happen? But they paid him. But like, the video is also, I'm like, I'm watching this video. I'm like, sir, you're just, you're just shoving it in my face that you're making $35 million a year. It was cute. He I was good. Like, hey, get paid, young man. Get paid. Oh, outstanding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he uh, he deserves it. Uh, He's so good. He he. Uh, Kyle saying, you know, reminding us that he's our number one dynasty startup player. Yep. And was before the extension. So this is definitely uh, nice to see him secured most receiving yards per game in the history of the National Football League thus far. I mean, yeah. uh, quite the average, 98.3 a game. So we've had the long discussions about rookie quarterbacks. It could be Darnold for a little while and then McCarthy, but um, your confidence level on Jefferson? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very it's, high. I mean, we already knew he was going to get paid. He's going to be great. Well, Andy, you published a new article um, today. Just Yeah, yeah it, it, went, it went out today, and um, it was the research that we talked about on the show about how do rookie quarterbacks – perform both for themselves and for their wide receivers or their pass catchers and about halfway through reading that article I was like yeah Justin Jefferson's gonna be fine because in that in that it was like very negative for most of the wide receiving options but there were some outliers that hit and hit hard and those outliers were basically hall of famers you know it's like Reggie Wayne totally fine if you're if you you know AJ uh AJ Green was like great well yeah these are awesome tier one, you know, top five guys in the NFL when yeah, they're Steve playing. Smith. Yeah, th those guys are great. And so it's like Justin Jefferson's going to be fine. And then now we have a follow-up report, which I've been expecting this follow-up report yeah. after every deal's been signed this offseason, but the Cowboys and CeeDee Lamb are, quote, expected to speed up contract negotiations from, that's from CBS Sports, <laughs> uh, Justina Anderson, uh, after the deal. So they're, you know, Cowboys are just, Cowboys are special. They like it's, to wait and pay more do it's you think so CD, wild. do you think cd wanted to wait like he did, may have because I, I i think 
be just for, look. CD Lamb's not going to get a contract like Justin Jefferson because he doesn't. I I he'll, don't think he, he will. He doesn't he'll, have the. Uh, he'll get paid a ton of money. He'll probably have the second highest yes, wide receiver. Contract, I agree with that. But it's like Jefferson is better than all of y'all. He should make more money, bigger, longer track record. But because of how much Jefferson got in this contract, I think I think CD million or CD millions. CD millions. <laughs> oh man, you're not going to be wrong oh, there. Oh, oh. <laughs> There you I go. Think, Wait for it. I think CD Lamb made millions more because this contract happened. <laughs> CD Millions is on the way. I won't be shocked if he gets paid more, if he becomes the highest. I, oh, I, man. I don't think that that is what's going to happen. It's certainly not what should happen. But I mean, I, I'll predict less total value, similar guarantee. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Dar Jamar Chase is out there as well. Who's who? He wants it. He wants to get paid. Yeah, as they all do, and as they should. You got to get your money when you can. Yep. Uh, Darren Waller expected to announce his retirement. I think we've reported that several times. For, yeah, season. this is a baker's dozen. Now, please tell me this is his retirement from singing. <laughs> I think he's going into singing full time. So congratulations to the Dang world. It. Dang it! Um, and you know we know Auto Tune is not going to be uh, going out of business. Uh, and then Anthony Richardson came out talked about his shoulder at ninety five percent. I think that's great. Personally, we're at the beginning of June to be feeling like you're at ninety five percent before training camp. I guess there was part of me that was like, this injury happened so early in the season last it, year that I would have liked to have heard. I'm I feel a hundred percent right yeah. now. But that. I mean, like, I don't want to think about it. It was a major, major injury to his throwing arm. So, if he's here, I'll take it. So, at 95%, Jason, does that put more of an inkling of, like, maybe he doesn't run as much in your head? No, I, I don't think so. I, I believe they're going to utilize him the way he needs to be utilized to, to capitalize on the success. They, they drafted him number, what, three overall? And you don't do that to not use his mobility. Yeah. Oh, fourth overall, Jay. Fourth. My now, now you draft him to not use it. Deepest apology. All right, let's take a uh, quick break. We'll be back with a. I think we're all drafting separate teams. We right? are. We are. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have a mock draft. And no report. Darren Waller has yet to retire. Still. I do have a report here. That the Giants are expecting him to retire. Again? Yeah. Okay. It just hit the wire. If he retires, do you have any uh, interest in Daniel Bellinger? We have a team that has now with Malik Neighbors one receiving option. I No. He had such a good rookie year before they made the transaction. For Not that good. For, for All right. A, not uh, that for a mid-round <laughs> rookie, he surprised and looked like he could evolve into a career. Yeah. And then the Giants said, no, we're going to go get Darren Waller. And then they drafted another tight yeah. end this year when they were expecting Waller to leave. I don't think that they view Bellinger as right. the guy. Okay. Uh, let's do it. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, here we go. Mike and I had a mock draft uh, a couple weeks ago. Just uh, he and I. And today, all three of us will be uh, giving it a go. Hopefully, learning from our mistakes, figuring out how things lie. It, it was a random draw of draft spots. We're doing a 12-team half PPR draft. Mike is at the five. Jason, you're sitting at eight. And I'm sitting at 10. And my first reaction to 10 is I'm not sure I'm going to like this. But I, I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't love being the meat of this sandwich um, because I get to get sniped on both directions. But, uh, you know, someone's got to be in the middle. Uh huh. Someone's got to be the meat. Yeah. So, can I opt out of the sandwich? <laughs> Do I have to be a part of it? Yeah, you're the you're you're the you're open faced. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> no, nope. that's only on a head to head. Uh, right now, it looks like you're the bottom uh, bun. Oh man, no, I'm not <laughs> what? Why am I the bottom? What bun? is happening? The mic's at the top of the round. Oh, is that how that works? That's just it's just math. Um, Chris McCaffrey, that was the 101. <laughs> Chris McCaffrey goes 101, followed by C.D. Lamb in this draft. Jamar Chase goes 103, Tyreek at 104, and uh, Mike, you're on the clock. 
I don't mind that start at all. Um, and so I'm on the clock, and the decision here would then be Justin Jefferson just believing. You know, Andy has the article. You can check it out. But he still there still is a little bit of I'm just going to believe everything will be okay for Justin Jefferson because he is that good while his quarterback play could be it, it could be really bad. This year, that's it's in the range of outcomes. Uh, if I'm looking at a running back, it's Brees Hall or Jay. You might be, uh, you probably haven't heard this because this one just came out. Bijan Robinson back at OTAs and at the podium was saying uh, his role in the Falcons' offense will be similar to how the 49ers use Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> what? Yeah, I hadn't it's, heard that. Yeah, yeah. So Kyle just shared that with us and. If, That's what Antonio Gibson said in Washington. If you remember. no, 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 that was no, that was his coach <laughs> said he reminded him of Christian McCaffrey. But if if Bijan really does get CMC usage, then holy crap, you should not draft him right here, Mike. <laughs> it's if that actually happens, it would be incredible. But a, at the top here, I'm just going to believe everything's going to be Ooh, okay for Justin Jefferson. Wow, I did gum it. <laughs> If you're watching, by the way, on YouTube, you can see the draft board live. I'm going to run it run it through uh, every round. But Jefferson went to Mike. A.J. Brown went at 106, so five of the first six picks wide receivers in this one. Half point PPR, 12 team. Bijan goes at 107. Stupid team, seven. They just heard the news from the press conference that Bijan's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, why'd you have from to say Bijan that? From Bijan himself. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Mike took Justin Jefferson. I just want to clarify, when, when I was saying – that Justin Jefferson's going to be fine. What I mean by that is like a top 10 guy. I don't think he's going to be a top five because of touchdowns. That is the one thing that will be lacking. He'll have 1,500 plus yards. He'll get near 100 receptions. But uh, He's still number three for me. It, really? Yeah. We've wow. never seen a double-digit touchdown season produced by a rookie quarterback. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, right now. At least in the sample. That Justin I, Jefferson's my my six. So, I mean, he he's, he's still up there. He's... Fine. I'm on the clock here. I wanted, uh, I, I definitely wanted B. John Robinson. And then the other options are Amon Ross St. Brown or Brees Hall. Those are the only two guys I'm considering here at this spot. And look, I'm going to take the guys I love. I love uh, Brees. Loved him since college. Uh, I would have gone B. John over Brees, but I'll take the consolation prize. Yeah, and I, I'm not unhappy. Uh, you guys went uh, Jefferson and Brees. Amon Ra went right after after Brees Hall. And I had eliminated it to three names. Brees Hall, Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Jameer Gibbs. So Jameer Gibbs at the 110. Uh, I feel great about it. I'm going to be a quick pick in the second round, so I'll take Gibbs in the first. Garrett Wilson, I know more buzz around camp oh, and man. that connection with Aaron Rodgers, yep. so we can repeat that from last year. Jonathan Taylor goes at 112, swinging into the second. We see Marvin Harrison. Your reaction to seeing Harrison going first pick in the second round? You know, that's where you're going to have to take him if you want him. Unlike, um, you know, the rookie quarterbacks that have not necessarily supported uh, their wide receiver ones, great. When a wide receiver one comes in and has an established quarterback, oftentimes they're great. You know, that was where Jamar Chase was, you know, a top five fantasy option his rookie season. So you can do it. I find myself passing It's there. scary. I, You know, like he went ahead of Puka. I would not take him ahead of Puka. All right. Puka went right after Harrison, which is going to make this decision a little bit easier for me. Uh, Gibbs is going to be – there's been a lot of talk of Gibbs, too. You talk about Bijan's utilization, sure. Jameer Gibbs' utilization. They said last year, you know, he, he caught a lot of passes, but a lot of it was check down stuff. This year they're talking about more route design for Jameer Gibbs in the offense as well. So I got the – you know, a PPR running back in the first, and I'm going to come back with a guy who had more utilization than almost anybody in football in the second round, and and uh, strip him from. No, don't do that. Jason's don't, don't, arms. Don't, don't take I'm going to take Kyron. Come on, man. Ooh, so I'm going to go Gibbs and Kyron Williams with my first two picks here. Drake London goes next, and uh, Jason a little disappointed. I am very disappointed. Yes, uh, I did want Kyron, and I expected Kyron to get to me. Uh, usually, he's been dropping to that spot. Unfortunately, you took him, and um, now I have to root against him. But thankfully, there's a mock. So I'm I'm on the clock here. You got at, at running back. You heard the inside of Jason's <laughs> head talking right then. Yeah. Like, at, at running back, you've got Saquon and Devon Achan here that you could go 
uh, to pair with Brees Hall. I feel very confident that Brees is going to be you know a weekly great option. So if I wanted to ever take a Devon Achan, it would be as my running back too. I don't want him. You know, if I had gone wide receiver Amon Ra in the first round, I wouldn't want Devon Achan to be my number one. I would take Saquon Barkley here in the second over Devon Achan. But if he can be my running back too, and then go get wide receivers later in the draft, that's a good idea as far as the wide receivers here. I think they're all in a very big tier to me. That's why I took Kyron, is because I felt like once Puka went off the board, mm -hmm. you have names like Devontae Adams and Olave and Ayuk and Diggs and Collins and Evans, and they all feel like they're in the same bucket, which is you know the way you would describe tiers and tier-based drafting. Uh, if you look right now in the ultimate draft kit, that is the end of the tier. Puka is the end of that tier. And, you know, Makes Harrison sense. went a little early from how we have him ranked in our uh, UDK, but he's in the group with Adams, Debo, Olave, and Evans are all together, and they're all available. So that makes it more tempting for you to go running back. It does, and and really because it's a mock draft and and I want to play with fire here, I'm going to take Devon Achan and pair him with Brees Hall. I'm looking to get guys who can just completely break fantasy. Those two guys have the physical ability. So, Mike, uh, since you are not in the high T club. That's right, very low T. Um I've got Gibbs and Kyron, Jason has Hall and Achan. Which of those pairs do you wish you Ooh. like which would you prefer? Because we're two picks apart. Man, that's it I think I would go I think I'm gonna take the Gibbs Kyron side because I'm I'm of the uh opinion that Kyron re doesn't repeat last year, but repeats being a truly dominant week week in and week out guy. Yeah, I I take the the Gibbs and Kyron side. If I could trade my two for your two straight up, it, Kyron was who I wanted in the second over A chan. And and my Hall and Gibbs to me, they're so close. They're so they you know, they're they're not uh, far apart. Gibbs is my number 3 running back. Maybe that's interesting though just in respect to how things are going to fall this offseason where you know, being at that 10 spot wasn't a death knell by any means. It let me pick up a couple of guys um and if you see hall and gibbs similarly then it, maybe it's more beneficial to be a couple spots further a chan to jason saquon to the Bijan manager and then Devonte adams off the board so mike you're sitting here with justin jefferson in the in the first round and what are some names that you're thinking about here so just overall the running back this tier even though a, a handful of these guys are in my top 10 they're just uninspiring to me because it's, it's Jacobs who I'm I'm out on at this ADP. Travis Etienne, I have a differing opinion. I'm not as bullish on him. Like I mean, my projections still have him at so the number eight running back, but like I I worry about them repeatedly saying it over and over that they want to to ease the workload. They, uh, he would be the RB nine at this point in the draft. So I guess that's that's fair than at ADP, but then. Henry Pacheco, Rashad White, those are the guys that you're looking at. Um, I I messed around and found out quite a few times. Yeah, I don't know if you listened to like oh the, my gosh the last yes, mock draft. Yes, I loved it. But you uh, wanted Kyler and you. I played I played a few games in that draft and I lost. So uh, let's see. I got eight picks between my next one, but I'm not gonna mess around. I'm gonna take Nico Collins here, uh, fresh out the bank, and I think he continues his being the dominant number one for C.J. Stroud. Not worried that he's going to come to camp weighed down by the money in his pockets. <laughs> Look, there's, that is a concern. Well, you, uh, you're you going to be up next, but after Nico Laporta goes in the second round. Now, this is one of the reasons I, that we have question marks yeah. on Laporta. It's not that he's a great tight end that's going to be one of those linchpin best players on your team and a difference maker in a matchup. It's that he's going 209, 210. 211, mm -hmm. right around that range. If he was middle of the third, I think our doubts would start to go down. He goes at 209 here. Diggs, Ayuk, Jacobs to finish the second round. Olave slips to 301. That seems like a value. Mm -hmm. ETN at 302 also feels that way to me. Yeah, that that's, that's a fine value there. And then Kelsey goes at 303. I think there will be a lot of nervous Kelsey selections this year. Sure. Uh, when you have a powerful name but a disappointing kind of end of the season, that's just tough to combine. To It's tough to pass on guys like Kelsey for a Nico, right? Nico, first big year, 
big performance. Someone like Kelsey, long track record of winning fantasy sure. leagues. Yep. I think those are just some of those name battles people face. Mike Evans goes at 304. And, Mike, you're back on the clock with Jefferson and Nico Collins um, and, a, you know, a number of those running backs you mentioned earlier still sitting there. Yeah, so the – it this this worked out because a it was pretty wide receiver heavy uh, on the way back sending me some of these running backs they're still there at the wide receiver position um, I am still quite bullish on Debo I've moved him down a little bit but he's still sitting there at wide receiver twelve he for was me. your second round pick last week I believe it's yeah so like I still love him he has moved down my rankings a tiny bit but that's so that is a hard has to start of just my projections my personal rankings three of my top 12 wide receivers that's a that's a very nice start because the scary part is at the running back it would be Rashad White and this dude freaks me out it's like no one's business of can it actually can it actually happen again what happened last year I mean we have a we have an offensive uh, switch that will be happening for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know the personnel is mostly the same, but will it happen again? Of in the look, they Bucky Irving, the the rookie out of Oregon, I believe, it's a low draft pick, but he's if anyone's going to catch passes behind Chase Edmond or behind uh, uh, Rashad White, it's Bucky Irving. So that that freaks me out a little bit. I I feel like Jason. Do you agree that Rashad White's more freaky? as in, like, could get you worried than ETN in his situation, Oh, right? Yes, he is for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. I think ETN's just a better football player when it comes down to it. Okay. Mike, what are you going to do? So, You've got a long wait till the fourth round. You, I'm got gonna, the, you got the king there. Yeah, King Henry is there as well, but Rashad White is, is higher in my ranks. So is uh, so is Pacheco. Okay. But I'm going to, with the mock, I'm going to take advantage of the mock, and I'm going to start with three top 12 wide receivers. I'm going to take Debo. You... Junk oh no, jerk! <laughs> this is why I didn't want to be the protein. Okay, let me be the slice of bread. You know I'm carb rich. <sighs> this is frustrating. Chiron on um, one side. Carb rich. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm rich with is carbohydrates. Did that? Does that come back on your like uh, your blood panel? Yes, my carbs were through the roof. <laughs> That's it. Just said you've got a lot of carbs in your blood. Uh, <laughs> we did find a surprisingly <laughs> yeah. large amount of bread loaves. Re Red blood cells, that looks good. White blood cells, looks good. You didn't find too many Hawaiian rolls in your <laughs> yeah. blood panel. Um, your John bread is off the chart. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we asked you to fast. I did. <laughs> All right, so Mike's going wild here with the triple whiteouts. Hey, starting zero RB. Let's let's find out. Josh Allen goes at 306, and I'm a little bit um, disappointed there because I was, I was going to be tempted at 310 at Josh Allen with the quick turnaround into the fourth round, but he's gone. Henry goes next. Hi, T. Team seven. Jason, you're on the board. <laughs> Man. Give me the names and the positions you're thinking about here with Hall and HN as your start. Yeah, I mean, right now in the third round, that's where I will look at uh, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. I, I will at least look their direction. Um, if there are no other great options on the board that I love, I'll, I'll pull the trigger there, and I might I might take Jalen Hurts here. Wide receiver – I mean, I know what I want to do in, in most leagues, and if I wasn't the protein here in this sandwich, I would I would play the game and I would not take DK Metcalf here because by ADP, he should come back to me um, in the next round. Andy started the same way I did, two running backs. I yeah, think, I was unhappy when you went second running back because then we're, we're in the same boat. Exactly. Of we're both going to be trying to get wide receivers from each other. Um, you know, and, and really, I'm looking at this. I, if I could start Brees and Devon Achan and get two solid wide receivers I really like, which I think I should be able to, like I want Metcalf to be my second one, but just Andy won't let that happen. You never know. Yeah, I never know. But there are other good options: Cooper Cup, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, Tank Dell. Guys that, if I could get any one of those as my second, I would do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Are you high T tempted? I mean, I hate to mention it because Rashad White's sitting there, and I didn't want to mention it because I feel like Rashad White almost in the fourth would be a value, but Rashad White in the fourth is a value, but. I actually have Isaiah Pacheco higher. So if I were to go at running back, I think Isaiah Pacheco is going to be great this season. I want to, I want, I want to, I want a solid running back core and a solid wide receiver core. So now it's just a matter of which game do I play? Do I give Andy the chance to snipe Metcalf? The answer is 
play dumb games. <laughs> Win dumb Win prizes. Win dumb prizes. So I'm going to take Metcalf here. He's he's my wide receiver 10, and there's no way you would have let him pass you twice. Probably not. Uh, it does put me in a position where Jalen Hurts is interesting at 310. Yeah. You are not paying a premium there. You know what you're going to get. What I think I'm going to do, and since I have two picks before you guys select, I think I'm going to take Jalen Hurts and try to come back with Ooh, Devontae Smith. I love – so With in, the stack. In my best ball leagues, that is my most common move. When I am near the end of the first round is that 3-4 turn. If you can get those guys together, I absolutely love it. So we're going to give it a go, and uh, it looks like that's going to pan out because DJ Moore goes next, Lamar Jackson at 3-12. Malik Neighbors at 401, and then Waddle at 402. And I, uh, Waddle would have been the one that would have made the decision harder, but I'm going to go what about, stack. But what about, okay. But the, well, no, go ahead, Mike. That, Rashad White's Rashad still White's there. Rashad White's still there. <laughs> he is. Rashad White is there. James and Cook is there. That's a brutal decision because the stack is delightful. It's fun. It's high powered every single week, but Rashad. I, where, where do you have Rashad White? Is he in your top ten? I have 10? him very high. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me take a little. But look. you don't want him, just like <laughs> I don't. I don't need him in this situation. What I need to do is make sure that I secure some wide. Res I have Rashad White at eight. <laughs> I need to secure a wide receiver because my wait is very very long, and I could end up with starting wide receivers in the, you know, my my wide receiver one could be like Christian Kirk if things go wrong. Or T. Higgins, if things go wrong. I don't want to do it. So I'm going to take the stack. I value that as a fantasy player, and I don't blame anybody out there who wants to enjoy the game they're playing to take that pair and know that you've got the volatility to win a week. Like, you can have a big game from Devontae Smith, and that makes all the difference. So I'm going to go Hurts and Smith since that was my plan. I'm going to pass on Rashad White and the, very, uh, the volatility there because I have Gibbs and Williams, and I feel really solid. So – Jason, um, it, it worked out well for me because there were a couple players I wanted to have in the fourth round at wide receiver available to be my wide receiver two. Those two names would be Cooper Cup and Tank Dell. Um, I'm fine with either one of those guys. Honestly, I'm going to go Tank Dell only and solely because you took Nico Collins, Mike, two rounds earlier. I think Tank Dell is right there with him in fantasy points, so I'll, I'll get the value and hopefully the better Texan um, at a later at a later point, I, I think Tank is my favorite Texan wide receiver to go in on, just because you know both Diggs and Collins went in the second round. That's just so expensive. If you're wrong or if it's divided up too much, fourth rounder to get a piece of that offense, I'm happy. Well, Pittman went next, which was in consideration with Devonte Smith. Um, if I didn't have the stack, Rashad White did not make it to Mike at Almost. 408. I think if he had, he would be on Mike's team right now. It would be very difficult to pass that, yeah. However, second draft in a row, there there are running backs that you can be very happy with here in the fourth round. Yeah, certainly. I, I like Kenneth Walker to have a bounce back year. Do you feel like this is going to be indicative of what you see during draft season where you know the, uh, the attractiveness of the wide receiver position, yeah. the guaranteed production is going to push some of these running back names down in reality? 100%. This is not, you know, a lot of times this time of year you go, it won't be like this come August. It won't be like this in your home leagues. I think this is exactly how it's going to play out when it comes to where the positions are going. Maybe the quarterbacks might go a little higher in your home leagues. Sure. But otherwise, the running backs will fall here. So, um, you guys, we remember last year it was a disappointing uh, year for the early running backs. But I've been, you know, like I'm, I'm doing some – analysis on values and busts and it was just remembering what really happened so last year right Christian McCaffrey first running back taken incredible league winning type of a year after that we went Austin Eckler woof, finished at RB 28 Bijan Robinson who he finished at nine but you took him as the running back three Saquon from four to 12 Nick Chubb the injury Tony Pollard was uh, he finished at RB 15 it was a bust Josh Jacobs, Ramondre, Najee, you had eight of the top ten running backs had a negative return on their draft price, and you are seeing that swing the pendulum in a major way this year. That's why the wide receivers are happening. Uh, so running backs available to me at this pick. 
James Cook, uh, Joe Mixon is that's you know that's that's a he's, close. He's against your brand. He's, it's a close to never drafting type of a player for me. He'd also be your second Texan in four rounds. Yes, yes. Else, a great Jefferson point as well. Collins and Debo, your first three picks. So if I'm taking a running back here, it would be Kenneth Walker. Uh, but I'm not. I have a. I, I so wonder. I have a zero. I, wonder. I have a zero RB build going so far. Uh, <laughs> I really. I really thought it was going to be Mark Andrews was going to be my pick because my man T. McBee wasn't going to make it back, but he did. So Trey McBride is on my team. I knew it. I knew yeah. Trey McBride. He's on the back of the wall here today. Yeah. Was shout someone? Apparently, someone sent that in. Like the, the deucers didn't tell us. And all of a sudden, there's a Trey McBride signed jersey on the wall, just is glorious and beaming off the wall. And someone sent that in. So thank you. Yeah, it looks pretty good, and he uh, he's on your roster now. Uh, so. uh, Mr. Hoffman, yes, thank you. Cooper Cup, C.J. Stroud, James Cook, and Mark Andrews round out the fourth round. Joe Mixon, Kenneth Walker, Keenan Allen, and Anthony Richardson heading towards Mike's pick in the fifth. We're going to take a break and come back with Mike's fifth-round selection. All right, Mike, uh, seeing how the rest of the fourth and the early fifth played out with Cook, Mixon, and Walker off the board, does that represent the kind of tier change at running back that makes you disappointed you took Trey McBride, or are you content? Uh, I'm actually I'm very happy with that because it's like uh, you know, Kenneth Walker, again, would, would be the guy I wanted to take with, with the upside he has. But Kamara and Connor here uh, – that's perfectly fine. The Alvin Kamara, it, like, it, I think they're both in a in an interesting situation here of Connor and Kamara. Yeah, with with their backups being guys that we really like that could have a surge over the second half of the year, but at least for the first half, which I'm just trying. That's all I'm trying to buy right now. Um, and uh, yeah, James Connor would be another Arizona Cardinal, which I don't necessarily want to do that, and so it will be. This will be an eyes wide shut situation. Alvin Kamara will not be watched by me because I cannot handle it. The protein is complaining again. <laughs> the protein is <laughs> the protein is complaining again. The meat's just gone getting, bad. He's just like the meat's gone bad. <laughs> I wanted Kamara. I think uh, you know if if you look on a per game basis last year, once he was back from his suspension, he was outrageously and just that's all Wait. you should look at. Only look at the fantasy points. You wanted Kyron. You wanted Debo. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you wanted Kamara. I wanted, yep. And, and you got how many of those guys? I got none of those guys. Yeah. Uh, so, Brees Hall, Devon Achan, DK Metcalf, Tank Dell. So, you're very, um, you know, symmetrical here. Balanced. Yeah, that's a better word for it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here, after Kamara went, T. Higgins and Dalton Kincaid. Um, Jason, what are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I could go any direction. I wanted a handful of players here. I was really, really, really hoping that somehow Trey McBride or Mark Andrews would fall to me. I didn't expect them to. I did expect Anthony Richardson to fall to me. None of those guys did. So my backup plan was Alvin Kamara. Thank you, Mike. Now I'm looking at, okay, the onesie position to me is kind of done here. Dalton Kincaid may be a little bit in consideration, but I'm probably not going to pull the trigger there. Well, I, you also can't. Oh, did he just go to? Yeah, he just went before you. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> um, so I don't so think you, I don't think he will. Trigger. I don't think you will. So I'm looking at the 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 next tier of players for me, and I want someone that can be a difference maker. I know I'm higher on this player than most people are. Um, it, you know, if you haven't seen my my tweet, a five game sample size with Amari Cooper, where Deshaun Watson played the entire game. In those five games that he started, people think like, oh, he wasn't good with Watson, he was good with Flacco. That's Najoku. The tight end position thrived when Deshaun Watson was gone, and with Deshaun Watson was terrible, abysmal. But Amari Cooper, I know it's a small sample size, yeah, only yeah. five games he played, but the 17-game pace would have been 95 receptions for 1,632 yards and seven touchdowns on a per-game basis. That would have been the wide receiver six. Yeah, so you, there's you definitely here. changed my mind a bit on Amari Cooper. So... I guess with all my uh, preferences being gone, I will draft Amari Cooper to go along with DK Metcalf and Tank Dell. Is oh, that who you were wanting, Andy? I would have really loved to put Cooper on the team. Devontae Smith is the two in Philadelphia. Take that, Brad. Cooper, 
Cooper is the one. I thought you said Brad. <laughs> it's like, what did Brad do? You're looking Who's around, Brad? You're looking around for a Brad. I'm talking about the sourdough over Br- here. Brad's driving down the 57 right now. I was like, what did I do? Brad. Take that, Brad. <laughs> So, yeah, Cooper would have been great. Um, it would have made my selection very easy here. I have Gibbs, Kyron, Hertz, and Devontae Smith. You thinking about Kincaid here? Uh, no, no, he's gone okay. still. Um, you know, I, I feel very happy I went Hertz. It was the beginning of a of a run on the top-tier quarterbacks. They're all gone. You didn't get Richardson. I don't have to worry about that. At wide receiver, look, I have a lot of – we had the conversation, Olave and Pickens, and what Pickens has been able to do – develop the route tree, more intermediate routes. Pickens is at the tippy top of the list here along with Kirk. And I I bring both those names up because they're very, very different to me in terms of how they help your football team. Um, So if I'm looking at wide receiver, Pickens, Christian Kirk, we're at the end of – I mean, Calvin Ridley, you know I like Calvin Ridley quite a bit. But I think I could come back in the next round and get Calvin Ridley. James Conner is sitting there at running back. That's very late for Connor. I, yeah, I think that's like. where I'm going to go because I think I can come back and take the leftover between Pickens and Kirk with my six-round pick. So I'm going to go Connor in the flex. Kittle, Pitts, Odunze, oh. and Pollard go. See, Mike, this is the inverse of what happened yeah. to you. <laughs> like you danced with the devil and you lost. <laughs> now you have to make a choice, though. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Pickens. I like I'm, it. I'm going to take Pickens I here like in the it. sixth round. And give him a shot. Uh, what was the price of a uh, Olave? Was a th- the beginning of the third in this draft. I think Pickens has a tremendous amount of upside. David Montgomery goes next, and then Jason, you're on the clock with your Hall, A. Chan, Metcalf, Dell, and Cooper roster. Yeah. So here I've got uh, a number of ways I can go. I'm looking at the onesie position, like functionally, philosophically, what I what I do when I'm loading up on running backs and wide receivers, as I've done. I look each time at like what of the onesie positions are left. And to me, like the tight end position, Evan Ingram is kind of a value, but I don't want him here. He's a value because he's, you know, should be a couple of rounds later, should be a late round pick. This is still a middle of the draft. So that's out. And if I lose out on Evan Ingram, then I'm like last round Pat Fryer. There's basically no one else that I really want. Um, you take put, that, Pat. Would you, oh, sorry. You, would you put Jake Ferguson in there? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Jake okay. Ferguson, uh, Pat Fryer, just one of the really late round guys. At quarterback, there's, there's a handful of guys. Kyler, Dak, Burrow, Dak, that I, I, you know, I could still play around with. So, wait, did you just give a whole onesie speech and you're not taking a onesie? Right, because oh, I'm, okay. I, I'm saying okay. I'm looking at those positions gotcha. and, I, and I just I'm not inspired by them. I'm going to take a player that Andy doesn't like. I've talked him up. Andy's talked him down. If you've watched our uh, player profile video on this guy, oh yeah, in the UDK, yeah. I still think he's got the juice. Um, he's in a good offense. I know that. Rookie quarterbacks have actually not been bad for running backs. Uh, they've got a pretty high floor. So I'm going to take Aaron Jones. Oh, I thought you were going to take Ty Chandler. <laughs> no, I'm going to take Aaron Jones, who I think still has it, got a bag from uh, the Vikings and will be an important piece to that offense. This is the one situation where I, I just say wholeheartedly, great pick. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Rashi Rice goes 606. Mike, uh, well, he wouldn't have wanted Evan Ingram anyway. He already has no, Trey McBride. Good. But Ingram goes at 607. And then, Mike, you're back on the clock. You have one running back in Camara. You have McBride and then the three wideouts. Give me a few names that you're considering. Is there a quarterback on your mind right now? Like you danced around There's... with Kyler last draft. Do you want to do it again? <laughs> that is you an excellent the stack. It is Kyler an ex- conundrum. It is an excellent question. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I am. You got to play. I don't know. <laughs> you can't win if you don't play. Yeah. Um, you need a running back, man. So <laughs> I do need a running back, and uh, I'm I am between two RBs, and they could not be further apart of what they are in archetype. One, it's it's Najee Harris. I get it. There, the the sentiment on Najee feels bad. It is bad. Feels bad. No, the sentiment. No, the sentiment is, is bad. Is bad. Yeah. yeah for okay, sure. it's bad. We're. To some but, people, that bad sentiment feels good. The, <laughs> thank you. The but the facts are, he's three years in the league. He's rushed for over a thousand yards every year. The Pittsburgh Steelers made a major investment into the offensive line. It's young players, but that could turn things around. And yeah, and yet 
You have, well, they denied his fifth year extension. The reports out of Pittsburgh were because of uh, Warren would need an extension as well. It's, we want to see how these running backs do in the new system before we make any, uh, you know, anything for the future for these guys, which I believe. So I think Najee is interest is perfect for my team right here. Just give me s some points. And then there's Raheem Mostert. Probably doesn't come anywhere close to last year, but there's a world where Raheem Mostert is actually still this like the starting running back, and Achan is worked in as a home run hitter like he was last year. So I like both of those guys. And then also it's those two guys and Kyler. And guys, for for the sake of the show, I think I have to see. You're gonna gamble. I think I have to find so out. Let, let me make it clear. Okay. Kyler's your pick at 705 if he comes back to you. Yes. I just want to put that yes. on the record. And you're about to select who? Which the looking at the draft board, eight picks. Two teams have quarterbacks. Team three and team four. Oh boy. So they should not double up. But teams and, one and two have two picks. And Joe Burrow and Dak Prescott are on the board. Just yeah. No, you're right. It makes it just should happen. Yeah. All right. Let's take the boring pick. I'm going to take Najee. I'm going to take my four yards of carry. Come Kamara, on, Kyler. Kamara and Harris running the football. No! <laughs> yes! <laughs> DeAndre Full Swift, clan. Stevenson, Kirk, Burrow, Addison. Come on, man. Kyler Murray is gone for the second straight draft. You don't get him. You Beautiful. have Najee. Um, you and have Najee Moster and, and Christian Kirk from last draft. Foot clan. <laughs> We are here to teach you lessons. Yeah. And the lesson here this is, is punishing. Learn from your mistakes. Team two had CeeDee Lamb. You Did, didn't want the stat. Mostert and, and Zamir go, so you don't get. Team two, learn fantasy football. You don't get Kirk. You don't get Murray. Um, now you could take Dak. I mean, if, if yeah, I could. you could just come back and, and take. Uh, t I, I think Dak is a better quarterback option than, than Kyler. It's. Let me, let me look. Where do I have them ranked? I have. He might be higher for you. You're just so. He's they're they're back to back. So it didn't matter. It was more of a. I want the stack. You can also quit the league. <laughs> look, if there's a team in your league that does something so stupid as taking quarterbacks who are in the same tier and not getting their DAC CD stack, the one that was league winning last year, you flip the table over and get out of there. But. Or, so, or congratulate yourself for playing sure. with a, a lousy player. So reevaluating now the quarterback position: Dak, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Tua, Jared Goff, who I I'm perfectly fine starting the year with. They're they're available, but whatever. Screw Team Two. I'm taking Dak. Uh Dak is gone though. To to uh, to you. All right, Eckler goes next at seven oh six. Jordan Love at seven oh seven. Was Jordan Love the he was the last of a tier for me when I, when I made my last pick. Of oh, so Aaron my Dak Jones. pick also yes. harmed you. Yes, excellent, it did. Yes, excellent. It did. which means I, the Kyler pick harmed yes, you as excellent. well. Yeah, I excellent. wanted Burrow, Kyler, Dak, or Love, and all went. Uh, you did not <laughs> want them enough more than Aaron Jones. So. Yeah, you got it. I got Najee. You got Aaron yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah congrats, guys. guys. <laughs> hey guys. Thanks it, for bringing me on board. What's well, wild is it feels like Najee's been in the league as long as Aaron Jones. It does feel like that. <laughs> wow. Jason made a selection. Now, he did not. Well, did he even know what he was doing? He didn't wait. Did, you made this pick, correct? E yes. Okay. Yes. I just made that pick. Jaden um, Daniels in really? 708. Not even messing around or waiting. Now, was he in a separate tier? I, I want someone at quarterback that can, you know, I'm, tr I'm trying to get as many players as I can that can really, really break fantasy football and, and you know, be true difference makers. We just played the game with trying to wait on ADP for Kyler. Um, you know, we've got a team here before me that doesn't have a quarterback. And I look at the quarterbacks here and, and you know, Brock Purdy, I've got ahead of Jane Daniels in my, like, expected median, median outcome. Yeah. Um, but I can grab someone later to pair with Jaden Daniels. I want Jaden Daniels on the roster if I can't have any of the other top end talent. And I am also punting the tight end position. So that's going to be one of my last picks. So I need some power, some firepower at my onesie position. I'm three and three of running backs and wide receivers. I just wanted some explosiveness at quarterback. Uh, Washington three and three will be your record too after six games. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, Washington, Washington schedule opens against. It's on the road. That's not great, but it's against Tampa Bay, who was, I believe, our one of our favorite teams from last year to pick on for 
quarterbacks and wide receivers, the Giants, the Bengals, and Arizona. Like that's a that's three games that at least based off of last year you'd be happy with all right i'm gonna make it pretty quick uh i was hoping for calvin ridley to make it back to me 710 for calvin ridley is stupid but i'm gonna keep doing it in these drafts for as long as he's out there he's the number one receiver for what will be a very pass heavy team in tennessee so ridley will join the squad i didn't have to take him at 603 i took him at 710 i'm also very happy with all of you guys quarterback shenanigans <laughs> that i just grabbed hurts in the third yeah Caleb Williams, Javante Williams, Jaden Reed, and Nick Chubb go next. How do you feel about Nick Chubb there in the eighth? Uh, maybe worth it or yeah, probably, probably okay there. Yeah, it, it's tough because I mean the team that took him already has their onesies, and but didn't have a, a running back too, so for their team, pretty dumb maybe. Sure, um, but I think it's worth that. You know, eighth and ninth would be pretty good. All right, I'm sitting here with. Ridley off the board in the seventh, coming up in the eighth. In consideration, Jalen Warren, who I think will be a better value. Zach Moss in Cincinnati. Both of those guys are at the tippy top of the running back list. Jason, I can feel him wishing me not to take one of those guys. I can feel it. I'm not even looking at him, and I feel the emanating. Uh, there's one player I would um, be very upset if you take. I will mention this because there was some positive news. Hollywood Brown is sitting here in the eighth round. It's not – We've none of us have been taking Hollywood Brown, but there was some very positive news from Patrick Mahomes talking about Hollywood Brown driving the ball down the field and how he's making every play. It's worth saying I'm taking Zach Moss. Oh, that's a great pick. That, that I think that is a good pick. When when you're in the eighth round, being able to get a guy who could be a a, a borderline workhorse back on a good offense, like that's that's great. Zach Moss can finish in the top fifteen. Absolutely. Um, so I've already got three running backs and three wide receivers. I'm looking for upside. I'm looking for someone who, as the season goes along, can really crack into the lineup and become a sensational player. That's kind of what I, I tried to do with Jaden Daniels. I'm going to take another rookie here. This is the guy I didn't want you to take. He's I want the top of my list. I, I want Jonathan Brooks. Yeah. He, he might start slow, but my team is built for that. That's fine. By the end of the year, if he becomes, you know, the the – the best rookie running back this season. He's probably going to finish the season. You, we'll talk next year about oh, his final eight games. He was on. He was the running back ten on that pace. When, that's when the fantasy playoffs are. I want him on my roster. Terry McLaurin and Hollywood Brown off the board. Mike, you're back on the clock. Dak was your last pick. Where are you going? And so I have my two running backs. Um, it, it basically everything Jason said. His Trey Benson's path is different because James Conner has been great the last few years. But they did. They drafted him in the third round. They drafted Trey Benson to be the future of the running back position for the Arizona Cardinals. He was my favorite rookie prospect at the running back position. And I, he, to me, is someone who can be work himself into a timeshare. And then if Connor misses games, I think Benson can take the job and they don't look back. All right, Trey Brent. Trey Benson in the eighth, Hopkins, Watson, Bowers, and Deontay to finish the eighth round. Unfortunately for me, because I was targeting him in this round, Brian Thomas off the board, Lad McConkey right behind him, a couple of rookies. Jalen Warren goes at 903, and David Njoku at 904. Mike, you get your ninth round selection here. So now we're just looking for upside uh I'm looking at the wide receiver position. I'm oh, I am actually balanced through the eight rounds. Uh, upside picks here for me would be JSN. Can he bounce back after a pretty catastrophic rookie campaign? Keon Coleman of the Buffalo Bills. He's a rookie. Does he really actually become Josh Allen's number one wide receiver? Uh, and, I mean that's that's at the top of my list. And then if I want to go safety, I would be taking Gus Edwards because he's a starting running back right now for a very high T team. So between Jason and Keon Coleman, I'm going to go Man, that's tough. I'm going to I'm I'm going to see how I like it if I'm going to go Keon Coleman here. See at the end of the year if I, well, I or at the end of the draft I like it. Cross that off my list <laughs> yeah, for the, he, I, I just lost, added him to yeah, my list. Yeah, I, that was the the selection. So good pick. Uh Ferguson goes next, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Jason, you had um, you built your own sandwich of, of sorts because you had Brees and Achan, then you went three wide receivers and Metcalf, Dell, and Cooper, and then since then two two more running backs in Aaron Jones and Jonathan Brooks. So 
you're pretty balanced. Uh, you don't yet have your tight end with two rounds, three rounds left. Ferguson was going to be my pick here. Uh, went to team six, two picks earlier. So, like I said, if if you know, there's a few targets I have in the draft, and if it if it happens to be like this, I'm going to be streaming the position. I'll grab someone with my last pick. I've got three picks left. That's another pro tip. Always make sure you know how much you have left yep. to add, so you can be like, ah, I need I need a wide receiver, or if I'm going to take a backup quarterback, or whatever you're going to do. Um, you know, you, you count how many slots you have left. It seems right now, my team, there's no one on the board that I'm like, oh, I, this guy's just so much far and away ahead of everyone else. I've got to take him. So I'm looking at wide receiver then. That's the position that I think my team needs the most. And again, kind of like what Mike said, I'm looking for someone with that upside where they could come in and be special. So you've got Jamison Williams. Will he develop into that uh, wide receiver two? Adonai Mitchell, if you believe in him, I don't, uh, but certainly the path is there um, if you're looking for upside. I'm going to, my plan right now, and I think I can say this, yeah, Andy's got Hurts. Uh, Goff could absolutely go with this turn, but I want to pair Goff with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, it's fabulous. So if I'm doing that, I might as well take Jamison Williams, have the, the wide receiver too. If he breaks out and I've got Goff, it gives me a little bit of um, upside and security there. I like that strategy there. Uh, all right. Well, I have my third to last pick. I still need a tight end, and this is um. This is an interesting situation, that I think I'm going to try out. Um, we don't know what the health of T.J. Hawkinson is, but we know the value of a healthy T.J. Hawkinson, which will mean that I have to potentially, I could just draft Hawkinson, and then look at the waiver wire when week one starts. That's one strategy, or I could pair Hawkinson with a Dalton Schultz. Pat Fryermuth, somebody like that, that I know I can start the year with and then see if Hawkinson surprises in terms of coming back to health. Honestly, if you are in an IR league, uh, which most of the leagues we play in, we've got IR slots. It is a wonderful strategy to just draft Hawkinson because if coming up the week of, you know, he's not playing, he's put on the pup or whatever, throw him on your IR and pick someone up. It's no different than who you're drafting here in the, you know, 12th, 13th round. Yeah, and so what I'm what I'm going to do there is take Hawkinson. I'm going to pass on doing a tight end tight end selection, and I'm going to take a starting running back in Devin Singletary with mm. the ten o three. Look, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary are not they're not sexy, no, but they are starting running backs, and those become a premium injuries. The there's only a handful of them that are worth it. Adonai Mitchell goes next. Jason jumps in with Jared Goff. You gambled. You won. Gus Edwards goes next, who was on my short list as well. And then Tyler Lockett just hanging on to the end of this draft. Mike, you are back on the clock. I honestly would have strongly considered Lockett here. Of just in case last year was something we don't know about, because obviously Lockett was not anywhere close to what we had hoped for for fantasy football. Uh, and it's funny. It put me in a weird situation of, uh, like if I had taken JSN with my last pick, I would be taking a shot on one of these other Buffalo guys of Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir. I just, I, that that's a wide receiver core that is ambiguous and I want pieces of it. And if, but now with Keon Coleman, I don't want to overload with the Buffalo guys. I'm just going to have kind of one shot per team. Uh, so that's why Lockett was was a, a strong possibility for me. We're in the rounds where just take just take some guys that you have that you think there's upside and you see the path for. Um, I'm gonna take this guy. He, there's no way that he, like I mean this is so far in a way above his ADP. But Rashad Bateman of the Baltimore Ravens has there's been like a groundswell. That has been building over the last couple of weeks, start, I mean, including the extension, the the way that the team, the players are talking about Bateman this year seems different. He was a first round talent, but again, low low probability odds. But I kind of just want to highlight it and get it on people's radars. Just get your antenna up and start paying attention to Rashad Bateman. Dobbs, Schultz, Sutton, Spears, Corum, Herbert in the eleventh round. That's wild. Yeah. Chase Brown, I thought about doing it, but getting two of them in the Cincy backfield, I didn't want to play that game. Shakir, and then Mike, your final pick here in the draft. So I uh, I think taking a chance on one of the Dallas running backs is is very valid at this point. 
I, I we're we're split here. You guys are kind of on the Zeke side. Uh, I'm on the. I think that Dowdle ends up being more valuable in the long run. Um, so I'm just whatever. I'm just gonna do that. I was gonna take. <laughs> I was gonna draft Antonio Gibson just to try and make people <laughs> really mad. Uh, but I'm gonna take Dowdle. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I'm I've got my last pick right now. I don't have a tight end. I punted it the entire way. I think a post hype sleeper on Pat Fryermuth. You've got Arthur Smith. You know, he utilizes the tight end the like crazy. The tight end percentage is massive last year, despite it not working for Kyle Pitts. Yeah, and it worked for Jonathan Smith, and I think this will be a little bit more um, consolidated to Fryermuth in the passing game. All right, my final pick on between uh, Xavier Legat, the rookie in Carolina, sure. and a player I'm going to actually select that has a huge opportunity in front of him, Rashid Shahid, uh, which I'll take with my final pick, the opportunity to be a full-time starter. Derek Carr loves him, and that's the upside play. I'll see if he... Goes for, um, I don't know, a couple hundred yards in week one and helps me out with my final pick. So as we conclude this mock draft, we'll go ahead and read back our teams. At running back, I have Gibbs, Kyron Williams, James Conner, Zach Moss, and Devin Singletary. It feels pretty robust, um, at least pretty deep at running back. Wide receiver, not as deep. Devontae Smith, George Pickens, Calvin Ridley, Rashid Shahid. Hawkinson taking the shot on him, and then Jalen Hurts at my quarterback position. Uh, quarterback, I've got the combo of Jaden Daniels and Jared Goff. At running back, I've got Brees Hall, Devon A. Chan, Aaron Jones, and Jonathan Brooks. And then a wide receiver, DK Metcalf, Tank Dell, Amari Cooper, and Jamison Williams with Pat Fryer, the tight end. <laughs> my, uh, my wide receivers, Justin Jefferson, Nico Collins, Debo Samuel, uh, uh, Coleman, Keon Coleman, and Rashad Bateman. I have Kamara, Najee Harris, Trey Benson, and Rico Dowdle at running back. T. McBee, a.k.a. Trey McBride, is my tight end. And then Dak Prescott is my grudge-holding quarterback. Makalaka ding dong. That'll do it for today's mock draft and this episode of the show. Thank you for listening. If you want to see the whole draft board, you can go to YouTube and check that out. That is youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click the bell. You'll be... Um, alerted when we go live with special events bonus episodes of the show and of course we'll be with you all year long ultimate it's out now you can check that out as well until next time the fantasy footballers say goodbye thank you for tuning in everyone we'll see you next time goodbye you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers